In the desolate trenches of the eternal war, a horrifying sacrament takes place. The insane men, their faces etched with the grime and desperation of a conflict that stretches back centuries, are no ordinary warriors, not anymore. Initially, we need to understand the origin and creator of these communicants. The formation of communicants is a grim dance between desperation and arcane power. The identities of those chosen remain shrouded, but the horrors of trench warfare are likely to lead some soldiers to volunteer for this unholy transformation, while the enigmatic Mendelist monks may select others. The ritual's location is unknown. It may be in hidden temples or even mobile shrines after the fighting. The Metachrist, a grotesque entity whose pained existence suggests a potentially forced partnership, fuels a ceremony that these monks, seemingly in control, oversee. The true power lies with the Metachrist, as it provides the corrupting essence that transforms individuals into monstrous soldiers. These communicants are terrifying figures. Towering in size, they boast an unnatural resilience, with wounds sealing shut thanks to the dark power coursing through them. Self-inflicted crucifixes blind them, and a twisted faith consumes their minds, making them unstoppable fanatics, wielding weapons that would cripple a normal man. They are communicants, their bodies forever changed by the grotesque communion with a Metachrist. These hulking figures, their humanity stretched to its grotesque limits by the divine essence they've consumed, become living battering rams against the enemy lines. The ritual itself is a brutal affair. The Metachrist, a wretched parody of the divine, writhes in agony, its flesh hacked away. Its ruined mouth, incapable of speech, lets out a series of tortured grunts that the Mendelist monks, grim shepherds of this twisted faith, interpret as a warped version of the Last Supper. They then distribute the raw flesh as a barbaric substitute for the Eucharist. As the communicants tear into the bloody offering, a transformation begins. Their bodies balloon in size, warped by the unnatural power coursing through them. Bones strain and muscles throb as their forms contort into towering monstrosities. Yet, amidst the agony, there is a twisted sense of empowerment. Wounds gape wide, only to miraculously seal themselves shut, a testament to the grotesque miracle they've become. This transformation comes at a heavy price. Fanatic devotion becomes their defining characteristic. The communicants, in a macabre display of piety, pierce the blessed crosses directly into their eye sockets. Blinded but fearless, they become unstoppable engines of righteous fury. Their minds, consumed by the warped teachings of the Mendelist monks, know only the glory of endless war. They are the harbingers of death, leading the charge through hails of enemy fire. With inhuman strength, they wield their enormous weapons, blessed implements of destruction. What would cripple a normal man turns into an extension of their wrath, pulverizing enemy forces with bone-shattering blows. The sight of a phalanx of communicants charging into battle is enough to send shivers down the spine of even the most hardened veteran. In the desolate trenches of the Trench Crusade, the monstrous communicants are not simply soldiers, but horrifying engines of war. Their immense size and unnatural resilience make them the ultimate shock troops. They break the lines and always move forward. Where bullets would shred a normal soldier, communicants wade through hails of gunfire, their bodies shrugging off wounds that would be fatal to any human. This allows them to spearhead assaults, creating a terrifying breach in enemy lines that regular troops can then exploit. But the communicants are more than just tough targets. Their inhuman strength transforms them into living battering rams. They wield colossal weapons such as grenade launchers and repurposed industrial machinery for maximum destruction. With bone-shattering blows, they crush enemy fortifications and infantry alike, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. Take a moment to discuss their weapons and how they affect battle. The communicants of the Trench Crusade aren't just terrifyingly strong, they're also terrifyingly well-armed. Their immense size allows them to wield weapons that would cripple a normal soldier. Here, brute force meets industrial might in a symphony of destruction. Classic brutality gets a monstrous upgrade. Imagine a hulking communicant swinging a giant battle axe, its blade capable of cleaving through trenches and fortifications with sickening ease.
Maces and swords, scaled to their immense size, become instruments of horrific carnage. However, the communicants do more than just engage in melee combat. Their strength allows them to handle weaponry most soldiers wouldn't dare touch. Grenade launchers become one-man artillery units, raining devastation down on enemy positions. The desolate trenches themselves might offer a grim opportunity. We could transform gears, pistons, and other industrial components into terrifying close quarters weapons, ideal for crushing enemies in the confined tunnels. The exact arsenal might vary depending on the battlefield and available resources. Desperate times might call for desperate measures. Imagine a lumbering monstrosity wielding a sharpened metal beam ripped from a destroyed building, or a makeshift flail constructed from barbed wire strung between massive poles. The communicants are a walking nightmare, and their weapons are a terrifying reflection of the depravity that war can breed. They are a horrifying testament to the corrupting influence of war, a warped reflection of a once holy faith twisted into a grotesque mockery of itself. These monstrous soldiers are both a blessing and a curse. Their devotion is a shield against the encroaching darkness, yet a chilling reminder of the monstrous cost of eternal war.